where it is. It comes from everybody in the information community. They're staying pat. Is it is in fact evil flows? <laughs> That's Joe Montaigne when he came on this program. One of the Swirsky brothers himself. <laughs> that man's BFF. What's his name again? I don't know. Oh, Ashton. About. Yeah, he he gave us one of these from his car. <laughs> now I think that will be the drop <laughs> if this. That was impressive. Decision to stick with Matt Eberflus does not work out. If it works out, I think we use the Joe Mantegna. Eberflus. <laughs> and that's <laughs> the, that's the drop for the, hey, that, hey, that's the drop for the defense. Now that's what you know, Chicago Bears defense in the last two months of the season after Ryan Poles, the general manager, picked up Montez Sweat and then signed him. Boom. Done. That defense is balling out. Now we just got to work on the offense. And to that tune, the Bears announced Eberflus is coming back. Mm. And the offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, along with his quarterback coach, hit the road. Hey, yeah. And mm. I'm telling you what, I have, I have texted multiple information individuals in our business Nobody knows what this means. Nobody knows what this means. I don't know what it means. Does this mean for, for let, all right, let's just take it one at a time. Here's what it means. Matty Bruce is not going to be fired. That we assume means Ryan Poles, the general manager is not going to be fired. We had Tom Pelissero on last week and he described that the new team president, Kevin Warren brought in from the big 10 commissionership. He would have a large say in how these matters move forward. And I guess the organizational meetings in Chicago spat out. Poles is staying. Eberflus is staying. And these are the individuals collectively that will make the monster of the midway type decision as to what to do at quarterback. As this team for a second consecutive year has the first overall pick dropped into their last laps. Last year, it was Lovey spitting his last breath mm -hmm. at the Houston Texans to give the first overall pick to the Chicago Bears, which worked out for everybody to date except for the Carolina Panthers because they're the ones who coughed up this year's number one to go up to get Bryce Young, leaving C.J. Stroud for the Texans, who then traded up into the three spot to take Will Anderson, and those two individuals will be active this very Saturday on Super Wild Card Weekend against the Browns, as Super. the Texans are the Super. Wild Card Weekend participants from the AFC South as the champions of that division. And the Bears, while the Panthers totally, you know what, the bed this year and fired yet another coach and threw drinks at fans. They have the number one overall selection again. What does this mean? I don't know. And at this point, as we are sitting here 10 minutes into this Wednesday before Super Wild Card Weekend edition of the Rich Eisen Show, nobody does either. <laughs> nobody knows. I think we all have an idea, though. Which is what? That. They're going to stay with him? No. I think they're going to move on. That they're him. going to hire somebody new once they make this decision i think caleb's coming you're asking fields if to stay to have his third different coordinator coach third different offense he's got to learn that's a lot yeah. for a young quarterback we've seen how that has rattled other guys and it's kind of set them on the path to a, a mediocre or less than nfl career and then they're out of the league do you remember what the story was late september i think it was or early october remember when he said he felt robotic in the offense, Justin Fields, remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robotic. Well, he turned that around. And then he got injured. And then he, well, he, he turned it around after his injury. It was better this year, yeah. but the question again Slightly. is, here's the real decision. It's not apples to apples. You have to pick up Justin Fields' fifth-year option. Right. And then you must, after playing it out in year four, give him a market contract. 
or let him go. It's that simple. Or let him play in his fifth year and give him a market contract after that. Go the Cousins route, play out the fifth year, franchise tag. Franchise tag and and do all of that stuff one by one and just see how it goes. Don't jump, don't cannonball into the contractual pool. Just dip dip a toe in. Then, you know, dip your, your leg in. Then you get to that spot where you really got to commit. But what are you, two games better? Are you nine and eight? And, and that's the question. Yeah. Or, you, or you see, hey, we're going to play it out and we will get him the proper coordinator and quarterback coach and, and, and then he will thrive. Or you don't have to worry about dipping a toe in and then you're legging and see how it goes. You're going to go... And get the kid. And I'll tell you what I would do if I was a coach who just survived. Or the general manager who just potentially survived. I'd get the young kid and say, well, we're attaching ourselves to that hip. Yes. And we're going to start the contractual process again. And we're going to bring the kid to Chicago. And I think the kid's Caleb Williams. I know you're already seeing mock drafts with Drake May. I just think when it's all said and done and you put down lists, what's to, you know, you always make a list. This is what we do here. And then this is the alternative here on this side. And then you compare and contrast. And if there's more positives on the, the list A, you go with list A over list B and vice versa. Caleb Williams gets the fan base completely fired up. Now, there are some Justin Fields fans in the fan base, I guess. For sure. But Caleb Williams has everyone at hello. If I'm the general manager and I'm the the uh, coach as well, I'm like, hey, I'm, you know, maybe they'll they'll give me a, a red shirt year with the new kid because we've, you know, he's a rookie. Or maybe you turn into John Fox, where you get the gate after you get Mitchell Trubisky, and we'll bring in somebody else who becomes coach of the year. Before crapping out with Trubisky. But you see what my point is, is a defensive coach wanting to maybe hook himself up to the young quarterback and then maybe it all changes. That's not a bad idea. You start the clock again with a contract. You don't have to worry about a fifth-year option. You don't have to worry about a market size contract and dipping the toe in the pool. You just jump cannonball straight into the first overall pick. That's what the decision they have to make. But first things first is it's Eberflus first. And if you're going to be bringing in a young quarterback like Caleb Williams, maybe you don't stick with Eberflus. Maybe you bring in a young wonderkind offensive genius to sit down next to him like Reed sat down next to him in Kansas City and now Mahomes is him, right? Right? Maybe you bring in that offensive mind who sits right on that Gatorade jug next to the wonderkind on the on the bench. Why would you why would you stick with a defensive minded coach? Unless you got the offensive mind, that's your guy. You take care of the kid in X's and O's land. I'll take care of him in psychological land, and I'm on charge of the defense because that's what wins championships here in Chicago. Yeah, the more I've thought about that this morning, I, I think that Fields is gone. Also, guys, you got to look at this as a Bears fan. You would assume you already passed up on Mahomes one time, and now you've got oh. to watch this guy and what he does, <laughs> knowing go. that he was right there, and you could have had him Nailed or it. Deshaun Watson, it. and you missed out on both of them. Now, well, Mahomes that's two point oh. Are you going to take the chance? I don't think a Bears a, fan is going to get mad that you went after this guy and no. it doesn't work out. That's a Bears fan thing, and that's a McCaskey thing. That's no, 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 I'm saying, no, 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 no. You no. are. You're hitting it spot on. That's a McCaskey thing because the owners were in charge then as they are now. But Kevin Warren wasn't there for that decision. And Ryan Poles wasn't there. And Iberflus wasn't there. That's not in their mindset. They are looking at this just cold-hearted yeah. business. Do we want to pay Justin Fields, you know, fifth-year option money? you know, in his fifth year, go through the fourth year and then have to sit with him for a fifth year, commit to him, obviously. And then we'll just see how it goes. 
that's your bird in the hand, but there's two in the bush named Caleb Williams and Drake May. And your evaluation of them is what? And also, how about this? What will you get for Justin Fields? Does it matter? I don't know. Because if you're somebody else, why would you take on that decision? We'll bring him in and we got to, we got to, the first thing we do is pick up his fifth year option. And now we're dipping a toe in that pool too. Oh man. But it's Eberflus and Ryan Poles. It's official. They're going to be the ones to do that and then figure out the offense. The question is, is figuring out the offense for which quarterback? That's what's happening. But as I started this segment and finished with, take one off the board for Harbaugh. He ain't going to Chicago. Yep. See ya. Sorry, Bears fans. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 